waiting for us to start or? Oh, I'm allowed to start. Okay. So, um, well, my voice is pretty loud. I hope it's not too loud for you guys in the back. Or in the can, you, can you hear me correct, right or? Yeah, good. Okay. Well, let's, let's start. Um, so, um, let's, um, we're going to talk about enterprise ready plugins. So, um, we're going to talk about a bit of the experience that we have as Black Duck. Let's, let's first do an introduction. So, my name is Ton Schott. I'm part of the SWAT team, and I think you can get why. So, um, uh, SWAT team in, within Black Duck means basically an engineering team that's responsible for solving all kinds of problems that we have on a short time of notice. And actually, uh, these two guys, uh, um, Richard, uh, James Richard and my, uh, my colleague Kay uh, Kendler, actually created these, this plugin for Jenkins that I'm going to present to you and all the pro plugins that we have. So I have a lot of plugins you have to buy. And um, actually, we're going to, to focus on a plugin that's for free that you can use after this presentation. OK. So what actually is Black Duck? So who's familiar with Black Duck? Who knows our company a bit? Okay, pretty much, well, yeah, some people. Okay, so Black Duck, what we do is um, we are um, um, finding open source, right? So we're capable, we, we develop all kinds of technology to find open source in your code base, on your uh, production servers, on your clients, whatever. We can find your open source. So, well, maybe that's not a big issue for you guys, but. One of the things that we have in open source is that it, there's always a license attached. So once you know what kind of open source you have, you know what kind of licenses you're using inside your company. And the other thing that you can use is the vulnerabilities. Because we have vulnerabilities in the vulnerability databases today. Uh, is everybody familiar with vulnerability databases? OK, so what we do is tie that into the vulnerability database. So you get a full inventory of open source licenses you use in your company, in your code, or whatever, and a full list of vulnerabilities that you have in the company, right? So the last part, that's what we offer you for free, and actually you can download it from GitHub so you can toy around with the code yourself if you want, uh, but that's actually what you're going to see. A third one, and a lot of people are not aware of that, if you as a company, so you get a full, a lot of time the open source projects you're using are not very active anymore, could be, right? And in order to manage that, you always have to follow the open source projects that you're using. A lot of time, you're not even aware of what kind of open source projects you use. That's what we call the social aspect. So once an uh, open source project is not very active anymore, we will automatically flag that. Well, again, in a nutshell, what we do is open source. Find open source and deal with it and help you manage it, uh, open source. And actually help you be more effective with open source. So our typical customers, uh, so I'm, I'm just catching some background why we why we created this plugin and why you, why we created Jenkins plugins because obviously we also integrate with all other all kind of other products but Jenkins is one of them. Um, so typical Black Duck customers are are well large enterprises that are concerned of intellectual property, right? If you're using open source that, for instance, has a GPL license and you deliver it to your customer, well, basically what the license mechanism says is you have to open up your own code. Well, if you're concerned about intellectual property, things that you invented yourself, that could be hurtful, right? That's probably not what you want. Uh, and there are several other cases that, that, that well, okay, well, I, I, won't, I won't make it too bad on the, on the Tuesday afternoon for you guys, because you already had a hard day probably listening to all other people. So uh, let's move to, um, the other point, so typically our customers are also concerned about, well, vulnerabilities, right? If, if you put the code there out in the world, you don't want, want, want to be in the news that, that they hacked your code because of some known vulnerability that everybody already fixed and, and you did it, right? And it's somewhere in some deep component that you're using. Um, that's it. And DevOps, of course, is obviously one of the points of our customers. Well, if we, um, one of the things that we have Ah, right. Sorry. Well, I got two slides over here. I wasn't sure which, which one was on. So why are we using uh, Jenkins plugins? Well, one of the main reasons, and we not always want to admit that, but one of the main reasons is that the people are people that work with our customers 
started to build Jenkins integrations because the customers thought that would be a good place to start with, right? Because typically what you do in your build, Jenkins server is run your build and that's where you have your source code and all your binaries put together uh, to a product. So that would be a natural place for us to grab in and do our tricks. So that's the first starting point. Um, the, the other starting point is, well, obviously, what we, uh, uh, Jenkins is scalable, right? You can, you can make uh, master-slave configurations, and that's actually what we also want to use for our tricks, because one of the struggles that we have, if you look to enterprise customers, is our technology has to crunch through all the code and all the binaries in order to do its tricks, so that's, that you need some kind of platform to deploy that. Um, well, uh, the third bullet already handled, right? It seemed to be the natural uh, spot to grab in and do our tricks. And, um, well, one of the things that we, uh, we did find is that we have these new processes, right? Like Scrum, all that kind of stuff. And so you want to find things early on, not on a later stage. So if you end up in a scenario just before you release and you find this open source component that you really don't want to release, right? You have to fix that in the later stage. It's typically not what you want. So that's one of the reasons why we created a Jenkins plugin. So early on in your software lifecycle, you can grab in and see what, uh, what the things are, the, the open sources that you're using in your, in your uh, product. Well, one of the struggles that we, uh, we had was, uh, you know, we just built it on a customer side, but we, uh, very soon there was a demand for auth authorization, authentication, right? So the people, who were doing things with our stuff should, should be allowed to do that stuff. So authentication. We did find the need for bulk job creation because our early, early versions was just manual, uh, manually scheduling jobs and, and run those scans that we typically need to do our stuff. Um, and that was quite cumbersome. So we needed a way to do that in, a, in an automated bulk fashion. And uh, one of the, uh, of the other things that we found out is, you know, if you just create a, a, a Jenkins plugin and you, and you create the next one, obviously an enterprise customer has a demand to have an upgrade path, right? You want to be in the latest version, obviously, but you don't want to lose your data. Well, it sounds simple, but if you, if you start in an ad hoc way as we did, well, that's, that's a big struggle if you, if you have to, have to uh, address that in a later stage. Okay. Um, so, again, as I already talked before, it seemed to be the place where everything is where, what we need. We need the binaries, we need your source code, and if that's all pulled together if you're using Jenkins. That's what, what this slide is about. Okay, so lessons that we learned. Well, one of the things that we learned, it's a big shift. So it's, it's not as simple as it is. Well, of course, to create a Jenkins plugin, it's pretty straightforward, right? Probably everybody in the audience already did that. But to make it enterprise ready, that's the next step. And that's, that's actually what we experienced in the, in, in the hallway. So one of the things you have to deal with uh, is, is, well, what I talked before, the scalability, right? The master-slave uh, uh, job types, and, and you want to have a lot of jobs running in parallel, all that kind of stuff. So you have to enable your own plugin to be able to do that. Security I talked about uh, before, and you want to do as minimal configuration as possible. Right, because that's that could be error prone. Okay, so one of the struggles I already told before is um, uh, version migration. So we had several versions floating around, and the data was not always compatible. So one of the tricks that we pulled there is just make make a REST API. So make our plugin able to to deal with REST API calls. So you could just grab the data from your previous version and create the new jobs in the new version, right? So well, it's not really a nice upgrade path, obviously, but it did work for us in practice. <coughs> well, this is actually maybe an open door for everybody here in the room, but actually for you, what we initially didn't do is do regression tests on our own plugin. So we, we found out in a later stage that, that there were some incompatibilities with particular versions, with Jenkins server versions, all that kind of stuff. So maybe it's an obvious one for you guys, but for us it was just something that we just hit during, during our, well, journey that we, that we took. 
Well, credentials uh, plugin, why does it matter? Probably I don't even have to explain why this matters in, a, in an enterprise, right? Uh, everybody is using a batch over here, so, well, that's part of the reason why we need, we need, why we need credentials, right? Are you allowed to do things? Are you allowed to be here? Well, all that kind of stuff you want to check, and that's typically what you will do with the, with, with the credentials plugin that we're, that we're using. Well, this is an example, a practical example. What, what's actually, uh, what, what we mean with good, if, if you look to the Protex username, Protex is one of our products, it is actually, you can fill in the user ID password and that's fine, you know. But what a better solution is, is, is use the credentials plugin and actually upfront make a configuration of people who are able uh, uh, or allowed to connect to the server and not fill it in but just drop it down, right? These are the kind of well, maybe I shouldn't say that, but simple tricks that you could build in your plugin to make it easier and to make it more, well, what we call enterprise ready. Okay, well, some uh, a example how you can just inc incorporate that into your own plugin, right? It's, the message here is pretty simple and straightforward. It's easy to incorporate this. So just spend some time and put it in. Um, and this is a piece of code that's actually uh, 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 showing you how you integrate that in your code yourself is just to recall to the uh, the credentials provider over there and, and and you're back in business okay rest api so already talked before right the rest api one of the reasons why we support the rest api is that you could automatically generate jobs that's that was one of the requirements we had and it, it has to do with the technology that we have on board but you typically create a lot of jobs and you want to do that automatically because it's very obvious which kind of jobs you want to create and you can easily automate it. So we facilitate a way by the REST API for, for uh, people who are using our uh, plugins to facilitate. <clears throat> well, I already spoiled the fun on this slide, so I'll skip it. Um, this is the example of, of some code snippet that actually uh, shows you how easy it is if you're using the REST API plugin uh, and, and adopt it in your code. So um, I don't have a pointer, but the, the top code is just giving you a, a get, right? It's just an HTTP get that you get on the server and you can handle it over there. And we get a post method where you just, just uh, uh, take out the stuff that you need and well, do the functionality behind the API call that you actually want to, want to establish. Um, well, this is a, a sample of, 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 of a call there. One of the other things that we use is the Update Site Manager plugin. I don't know if people are familiar with that one, but the, the cool thing about this one is that it is quite easy to facilitate updates for your plugin yourself. And, uh, well, that's, that's actually what's stating on this slide. Um, how does it work? Well, it's, it's pretty straightforward, as you see over here. You deploy it in an artifact or a nexus, you create an index, and, and you're, you're in business. So actually, it means if you go to the manage, uh, manage plugins, you can just, uh, well, probably everybody knows that, right? You have these, these updates that are, uh, that are uh, available to you. And you just select the update and do the update, and uh, that's it. So it's, it's, it's nice and straightforward. Um, well, now I'm just, probably I'm, I'm speeding a bit too much here, right? <laughs> so how much time do I have? Like another half hour. Half an hour? Oh, <laughs> okay, you can leave early. So <laughs> well, that's made probably the positive thing about this. Okay, so what did we create? We actually create a free plugin that you can just download. And it's, it's a, if you install Jenkins, if you go to the Manage Plugins, there is a Black, a black Duck plugin over there. You can just select it and install it and you'll, you'll get the things that I'm going to show you in a moment. So what is this about? So up front I just want to warn you, it's just, we just show you what we're able at and it's a very, very small subset of what we do in practice. But just to give you a flavor and just, just to give you some insight of what we're doing. So one of the things um, um, uh, that you will see is, um, just a second. Uh, what you will see is that um, um, we'll, we'll able to generate a lot of data about the components that you're using. So basically how it works, how it functions is, in this case I'll, I take Maven, it's also supporting Gradle. It takes the Maven POM file 
and looks up, uh, on the, to the dependencies that you have in the Maven pom file. Well, that's not impressive at all, but it's also traversing the dependencies it has on other, uh, 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 other pom files or jars or what have you, right? Just as a warning, and that's more of the area of Black Duck, if you're using open source, most, well, most of the time open source is using open source, and most of the time they have different licenses. The thing is, if you're using stuff, if you're using open source, you're responsible to, to uh, deal with all the licenses contained in the stuff that you're using, right? So that could be a big issue for you, and that's what you partly, partially will see in the, in the, in the, in the uh, Jenkins plugin we provide to you. Um, one of the thing I, things I want to point out to you guys, if, if you want to use open source, and obviously we want, uh, there's there's a neat, this neat, neat site, I'll just show you, because I get time enough, so. Um, called the Open App. You can just access it, it's, there's, you don't have to pay for it, so it's for free. So it's always good. Well, I'm, I'm from Holland, so everything is for free is good. Um, so, people just, what kind of open source do you need? What kind of functionality are you looking for? The app integration. Sorry? The hub integration, well, a bit more obvious functionality, like database or something like that, yeah, right? I can, I can put in hub, oh, okay, let's do that. Hub, what did you say, hub? Integration? Oh, GitHub. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, you know, the confusing thing for me is we also have a product called hub, so I thought you were referring to that. GitHub integration. So, what it will see, give you a list of open source components that we're aware of. So, uh, if you allow me, I just take the first one. Yeah? Okay, thanks. So, I just drill down a bit. So, things that we capture there is, okay, this particular component, the active call-up GitHub module. Uh, well, there's, normally there's a description here. Well, there is no description here now, so that's basically the open source project themselves that, that are doing that. But what we do is just, we interrogate the, uh, the, the open source uh, module and uh, show you what kind of languages are used. You see that over here, right? And, uh, well, this is, not, this is not a good example. Uh, is it okay with you guys if I just take another example? Because yeah? okay. some, some data we, just not, we were not able to capture over here. So, uh, is it okay if I just use database? You don't care as long as I speed up? Okay, database, right? So, let's take um, a very obvious one. The Postgres SQL database. Again, what I, saw, uh, what I showed before, you see the languages are that are used over here, the programming languages. Well, there is something going wrong here. Because normally what you see over here is a graph for the commits per month, per month and the contributors per month. And you see the lines of code over here. But it's not showing up here, and it's, not, oh, it's showing up. Okay, thank you. So it looks like my machine is slow. But, um, okay, so go back. What you see over here is over time, how the code base is, is growing, right? What you see over here is the number of commits per month, right? That's not saying everything, you know? You could have one committer being very active and have 100 commits a month, right? So that's not, well, it's not telling you everything. So that's why you have the committers per month. If you have 30 committers making 100 commit, commits or one committer making 100 commits a month. That's saying something, right? It's saying a lot of more people working on this component. So if you have one committer instead of 30 committers, it's probably a component that's, that's a better, the 30 committer component will be a better alternative than the one committer component, right? Okay, one of the other cool things uh, that you can see is the uh, amount of time you should spend yourself to create it. And you could say, yeah, how do you measure that? Well, who's familiar with the Kokomo model? <laughs> Nobody, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's just a calculation model just to determine how much manual you will spend to, to, to build it, this thing yourself, right? So yes, it's not, it's, it's, it's not, it's not mathematical. But you could, well, you know, if one component took, took you 10 year, man year and another one 1,200 man years, you, you pr probably have a sense of what kind of component the, this one is and the other one, right? So it, it's more complex. Okay, so it, it'll give you, this will give you guidance to select 
the open source component you want to use or don't want to use. Okay. I'm trying to get you impressed here, but nobody seems to be impressed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I'll try again. One of the things you could do is just make a comparison matrix like this, right? And then I'll, and then I'll quit, you know, because I, I, it looks like I'm the only one having fun here. Um, so, if you go through this matrix, it's just comparing different, well, in this particular case, it was databases that I queried, right? And you can compare it in terms of number of developers working on number of commits, all, all, all of those statistics, right? Okay, let's go back to the presentation. Okay. So, um, selecting your open source and, and, and selecting the right components could be a challenge, right? Who, who ever faced that challenge? <laughs> okay, uh, that explains why it's not a very interesting topic for you guys. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Let's see, where are we? Um, yeah, you see, well, it's, it's just elaborating on what, what I think it's a nice subject, but uh, I won't elaborate too much, too much. Again, the vulnerability reports that we generate based upon the findings that we have, based upon the open source that we will find for you. Um, and what we, what we are actually, and I'll show you in a moment, what we'll do is just generate a report for you. What we typically call a bill of material, bill of material means just plainly a list with all open source components that we found during the scanning that we did of your source code or the machine that you provide to us or whatever. And well, the good news is the last one, especially for me from the Netherlands, it's for free, right? So you guys should just go out, I, I finish early, and you still have time to install it and see it yourself. So this is the, this is the spot where I have to, to do a demo. I'll do that. Um, so I'm going to, to Jenkins and create a new job. Uh, go, make it a, J, a Maven job. And obviously I already installed the plugin. So you see here a selection to do a vulnerability. That's uh, probably not very readable, but that, uh, down there it says Black Duck Vulnerability Maven Integration. And I'll just give it uh, a POM file. I was afraid of that. I just pointed to one of my projects. There you go. Kick off a build. There you go. Should give me the app. Oh, sorry, I just missed. Okay, I pushed the wrong button. Well, I can do it again if you like. But what you'll see is just uh, it's just executing the build, and if you look a bit down, it will actually communicate here that also the vulnerability plugin is looking for vulnerabilities. Well, I'm not really sure if you can read it. Probably not in the back end, but it's actually. Um, uh, logging what it's doing and actually interrogating for what kind of components. Maybe not so very interesting, but the interesting part is that you have the option here of a Black Duck vulnerability report. And well, there you go. This is actually it's a quite, quite a small project that I used, but you immediately see here the list of open source components found over there. You see the licenses over there that we, that we recognized, and we got the security risks that's actually on the on the other side over there, right, with a high, medium, and low uh, uh, vulnerability. Well, how do we get high, medium, low? So I'll prevent that question. Uh, it's quite easy. That's what we use for if we interrogate the vulnerability database, right? The NVD. Is, people are familiar with NVD and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's actually what how they how they measure that, right? They they always say high, medium, low. And so if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, if you go on the web. And actually, I've got it over here. It's, it's actually this website where you actually can, can query for your components and it's picking up all the vulnerabilities and you get a list uh, of vulnerabilities over there. Okay, so um, the way to install it, um, 
Let's go over to Manage Jenkins. Manage, manage Update Sites. No, sorry. It's not Manage Update Sites. I'm, I have to apologize for that. Uh, manage Plugins. Just go to inv Available. Well, it, it won't pop up over here because I already installed it. But if you just install Jenkins, go over there, look for Black Tech, query for Black Tech, select it, install it, and well, you can do the same thing as I did today. Okay, that's pretty much my story. So, um, questions? So I thank you for your uh, attention and uh, have a good afternoon. Bye.